Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you have a fantastic Thursday, fantastic Thanksgiving. Welcome back to the show, whether you are watching this to escape your family or your... This is actually, this would be a weird one to show your family where you get some of your news. That's because today is a weird, disturbing one, but it does kind of fit in the theme of Thanksgiving about family. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be about a good families. And the reason for that is this is kind of an update and addition to a story we covered last week about really, really inappropriate content on YouTube that was geared towards children. There we saw a lot of animation and live action of characters hurting each other, doing weird sex fetish stuff together, characters eating poop, tricking each other into drinking each other's pee. You need a recap of that and that whole Elsa Gate thing. I'll link to that video down below. But in that video, I mentioned child exploitation, said that we would get to that as well because that is also a very big issue. And there's a good number of people that have a different idea in general of what they think about child exploitation. Some people have a low bar of just having a channel that is, that is focused on a child or children that by itself is exploitation. And to that I say, I understand where you're coming from, the, the mindset there, but I, I don't, that, that's, I think too low a bar. That bar includes channels like uh, Ryan Toys Review, which is a massively successful channel. When they were accused of botting, I brought him onto the show, met the family, met the kid. Th that, that child, that child is having a blast making those videos. That child wants to make the videos far more than the parents do. They just do silly family stuff in their videos. Now, if at any point one of the kids in a video doesn't want to do it, they still have to do it, boom, that's exploitation. You, you could argue that's abuse. At that point, you're essentially forcing a child to work. The reason I mentioned that kind of channel that's geared towards children is because what we're about to compare it to is Oh my God. Channels we saw on YouTube like Toy Freak. Eight million plus subscribers, millions and millions of views on tons of videos. And the videos included things like the father terrifying the daughters, filming them while they were in the bathtub and shower, have them spit up food or force feed them or have them pretend to, to be babies. There's one video where it looks like the girl peed or they just try and make it look like the girl peed on herself. Why would you embrace a pee fetish video with your family? Like I, I've, I've seen the reports that he's done interviews and he said, you know, he was trying to follow trends. That's your family. How could you put a video out of one of your daughters peeing on the other. Even if you just insinuate it and show the wet spot on one of your children after. Who does that? How do you think this is going to affect them mentally? And, I, and I'm so tired of, of parents that do this and they're like, the kid says it's okay. You're the parent, you're putting your child, a minor, in a position where they're incentivized to go along with whatever you say. That's why I say I understand where people come from where even if a channel is just focused on a child, they think it's messed up. For videos like this or the, the Daddy of Five situation we've talked about in the past, it's like, come on. When you find a lot of these inappropriate videos it does feel like many of them are just copying one another. They're, they're doing the same thing, but but taking just a different character or a different uh, person. But these are your daughters. Also, keep in mind, it's not just Greg Chisholm. There, there are a ton of accounts and weird genres. In a report that came out from uh, BuzzFeed around this, they, they, they talked about Greg, but they also talked about just the genre of children acting like babies. The videos that got featured there were then removed. And in fact, one of the reasons I mention this isn't just to say that there is a problem, just like many of these other outlets have been doing, but it's also to point out that you YouTube is listening and doing something about it right now. Greg Chisholm, the Toy Freaks channel, got shut down. YouTube also saying in a statement this week, in the last week we terminated over 50 channels and removed thousands of videos under these guidelines. YouTube also said in a recent announcement they're going a step further to block comments. On a lot of these videos with young kids you have a lot of inappropriate sexual or predatory comments. YouTube said they're getting even more aggressive here where they're just going to turn off the comments in general on videos where they find that. Adding across the board we have scaled up resources to ensure that thousands of people are working around the clock to monitor, review, and make the right decisions across our ads and content policies. These latest enforcement changes will take shape over the weeks and months ahead as we work to tackle this evolving challenge. And that's fantastic, but hopefully YouTube realizes that this is not just a moment in time. This has to be a change moving forward. Even after all those channels were shut down, videos were removed, it's still very easy to find very troubling videos. There's some channels that are debatable and they shouldn't be compared one to one, that being kind of like young gymnast channels. Some of those channels seem to include just little girls that, that like gymnastics and it's like, hey, I learned a new move. But then there are those those channels, but the, the camera work zooms in like in a way that I can't show you in this video and I wouldn't want to. Sometimes they seemingly go out of their way to wear less clothes in the video. The thumbnails are incredibly troubling. You also have channels like Lady Diana that seem to show children in trouble constantly. Little kids tied up, there's kidnapping, fake torture. For channels like Mr. Tisha, you have a scary clown that's like kidnapping a kid. That channel seems to advertise pain and discomfort for children. Giant ant bites child. Another one of the kids bleeding from his mouth. Keep in mind, it's not the case for every kind of video, but some of of the videos that we're talking about here end up getting monetized. And that's without even going into the weird random shit that pops up if you search webcam video. You've got channels like Seven Fabulous Teen, and this channel might sound familiar because a, a while ago, Daniel Tosh uh, on his show, Tosh.0, he pointed it out. They have videos like the naughty elf on a shelf, where this teenage girl gets an elf on the shelf, and then it kidnaps her, then drag 
hiding and taping her unconscious body against a wall. The elf on a shelf then eats the marshmallow in slow motion. And this is a channel that on its about page says, this is a parentally controlled and moderated channel. The parents are responsible for all uploads. And once again, I'm not making this video to shame YouTube. I, I acknowledge that they are trying. They are trying a lot more than it seems they have for a while. So I'm making a video on this for a few reasons. One, to acknowledge that YouTube is trying and they will need to continue to try moving forward. This is not a moment in time. You are just playing a ton of catch up. They are currently trying to do something, so I want to give them props for that because it's very easy to complain. I also want to acknowledge good change. The second is to showcase more channels and, and to remind uh, friends and family of, of children kids can still come across things like this. YouTube can try, and I think they will try their best to stop stuff like this because it is in their best interest. You have channels like Rainbow Rhymes. They have a 25 minute video, and then beautifully in the middle of this video that seems to be for babies, a plane crashes killing all of Purple Bear's friends. <laughs> Another channel called MLA TVIT. Once again, a lot of these channels follow the same theme. This channel also has a Naughty Elf on the Shelf video. But obviously, the biggest difference here is that an even younger child is taped against the wall. You've got videos like this with the title Wound with Knife Giant. Right from the beginning, the kid's crying. Thumbnails where there's a hand closing in on a nose. Another where it looks like a car is about to run over her. One where her face is all bandaged up and she's bleeding. There's always going to be something that slips through the cracks. So, so don't let YouTube kids, don't let the YouTube app be your child's parent. At the very least, just try and keep an eye on what they're watching, and when you see something that's really messed up, flag away. YouTube is a massive website. The reason they are talking about trying to perfect their algorithm to find it, to, to not just rely on human beings, is because there is just so much content. And if anything, it's good to see that there, there are some issues that, that it's not really a partisan issue. I've seen people on the left and the right calling this out because everyone wants just to protect the kids. But that is where we're gonna end today's show. I, I of course do wanna pass the question off to you. Uh, with these stories coming out, does it does it make you concerned about YouTube kids? Do you feel like it falls more on YouTube or the parents? Just in general, I'd love to know your thoughts on this story. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I try and do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you missed the last Philip DeFranco show, you wanna catch up, click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you wanna see the newest behind the scenes vlog, click or tap right there to watch that. But that's it, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. Franco, you've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you next time.